And this is what we're looking for. This is a caricature or an illustration. It's based on a soccer player in Ireland called Robbie Keane. And look at athletes' faces. Look at their faces. So you have wide facial structures, good cheekbones, straight teeth. But more importantly, we see that the tip of the chin is coming out. We see this definition. Well-developed jaws and good airway size. This is a paper by Harari. It's a 2010 paper. 116 pediatric patients who had undergone orthodontic treatment Mouth breeders demonstrated considerable backward and downward rotation of the mandible because their face is longer. Increased overjet, overjet is buck teeth. Increase in the mandible plane angle, a higher palatial plane, and narrowing of both upper and lower arches at the level of the canines and first molars compared to the nasal breeders group. Um, the prevalence of a posterior crossbite was significantly more frequent in the mouth breeders group than nose breeders. Abnormal lip to tongue anterior oral seal was significantly more frequent in the mouth breeder. So the ability for the individual to close their lips was more difficult in the mouth breeder, which you'd expect, than the nasal breeder, double. Nasorespiratory obstruction. So when the, the nose was blocked during ma with mouth breathing during critical growth periods in children has a higher tendency for clockwise rotation of the growing mandible with a disproportionate increase in the anterior lower vertical face height. So basically it's looking at the mouth breeder has that longer and narrower face. In this paper here, a mouth breeder lowers the tongue position to facilitate the flow of air into the expanding lungs. The resultant effect is maldevelopment of the jaw in particular and deformity of the face in general. It's a very strong statement to make, a mouth breeder, maldevelopment of the jaw and deformity of the face. Setting of the, tongue, setting of the teeth on the jaw is also affected, and all of these make the face look negative. Do you know any parent that would like their child to grow an ugly face? No. The switch from a nasal to an oronasal, which is mouth and nose combined breathing pattern, induces functional adaptations that include an increase in total anterior face height and the vertical. So you see that there's agreement. This paper here, long-standing nasal obstruction appears to affect craniofacial morphology during periods of rapid facial growth in genetically susceptible children with narrow facial patterns. In a study of 47 children between the ages of 6 to 15 to determine the correlation between breathing mode and craniofacial morphology, in quotes, findings demonstrated a significant, a significant predominance of mouth breathing compared to nasal breathing in the vertical growth pattern studied. In other words, the mouth breathers had longer faces. The paper concluded that results show a correlation between obstructed nasal breathing, large adenoids, and vertical growth pattern. This paper, children with obligate mouth breathing due to nasal septum deviations show facial and dental anomalies in comparison with nose breathing controls. This paper, a study of 73 children between the ages of 3 and 6, concluded that mouth breathing can influence craniofacial and occlusal development early in childhood. This paper, the main characteristics of the respiratory obstruction syndrome, a blocked nose, are presence of hypertrophy tonsils. Many children who have enlarged tonsils, if you get them out closed, in some cases the tonsils will shrink. They'll go back and the adenoids will do so as well and the polyps nasal polyps, because you, you will see it. It mightn't happen with all instances of tonsils, but there have, I've spoke with different people involved with this longer than I am um, that are working in the States in terms of myofunctional therapy, working for 30 years with dentists, and they have many examples of children with enlarged tonsils shrank as a result of getting lip seal, because if you breathe through your nose, your nose is your primary defense. But if you breathe through your mouth, your tonsils are your primary defense. And your tonsils can become overburdened. Um, so you see again, you know, excessive appearance of maxillary and anterior teeth, narrow external nares, V-shaped top jaw. So lack of growth affects the whole face and is associated with flat cheeks, unattractive lips, large noses, tired eyes, double chin, receding chin, sloping forehead, 
So a lot of issues associated with mouth breathing. The nose will seem larger, similar to that of a Roman nose. The nose is more pronounced in an ideal occlusion, but in very small occlusions where the maxilla is underdeveloped, it appears larger. But it only appears larger because the jaws are set back. Children, this is published in the journal General Dentist. Children whose mouth breathing is untreated may develop long narrow faces, narrow mouths, high palatial voice, dental malocclusions, which are crooked teeth, gummy smiles, and many other unattractive facial features.